Shalom. Shalom, family. Uh, this lesson is going to be titled, Dying in the Assemblies, Churches and Camps. It's time to get off the milk and eat some meat. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I want you to think about what I'm about to say to you here, okay? Inside of you, I know that some of you can tell that something is wrong. Or something is missing. Yep, something is missing. And you may make it to your assembly, you may make it to your camp or to your church, and you sit there and you say, man, I got some word today, I heard some truth today, but it still feel like something is missing. Or that something just ain't right. Mm -hmm. You can sense it. You can feel it. Mm -hmm. But you can't quite put your finger on it. Some of you, the problem is, you might be spiritually dead. Mm -hmm. And you just don't know it. Yes, because without the presence of the Most High in your life, and see, a lot of us confuse what the presence of the Most High is. Yeah. Is more than just being able to get in the word and read it and break down scriptures and things of that nature. That's right. You have to feel the presence of Yah in a, in a certain way, in a particular way. When you look at our ancestors, mm -hmm. they have testimonies, such testimonies that are written in scripture that I notice a lot of assemblies or camps or churches kind of don't deal with those particular subjects because then they would have to question as to where is this presence of the Most High in their own lives or in their own assemblies or, the, or in right. their own churches. That's right. You have to, like, just like what my wife said, you have to have the presence of the Most High should be in your life mm -hmm. and He should be in your life in such a powerful way to where you don't have to question it. Mm -hmm. You know He's in your life. Mm -hmm. You know He's guiding you. Mm -hmm. You know He's speaking to you yes. and guiding you throughout your daily events. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. So some may be spiritually dead. You may be in a church. Mm -hmm. Some of you may even have the Ruach, mm -hmm. but yet you feel like you're not being fed. Mm -hmm. And what's going on with you is your inner man is spiritually starving. Yes. Yes. That's right. He is spiritually starving. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to get to the bottom of why we go through some of these things and some of us are just um, we just don't understand because we we become like Eve we're tempted by knowledge mm -hmm. and we think that that knowledge is the key to being spiritually fed mm -hmm. right Ain't that what we think that's what many people think that's right well, knowledge does fill up, but it puffs up. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> knowledge puffs up. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now, the spirit makes alive. That's right. The spirit mm -hmm. makes alive. Yes. Makes what alive? What is it you, you need to feed? What is it in you that need to be fed? It's your soul. Yes. That inner man. That's what needs to be fed. That's right. Mm -hmm. So what's going on is we find ourselves doing what is called uh, work. You know, from day in to day out, we find ourselves just working and working and working, trying to um, get somewhere in the Most High, mm -hmm. trying to get closer to Him, but not really ever experiencing a closeness like you want to feel with Him. Now, when I say a closeness, I'm not talking about a closeness just because you read the scriptures and you know the scriptures from Genesis to Revelations. That don't mean you know the Most High. No, it doesn't. Okay, You can know the scriptures from Revelations and back to Genesis. You can know all the Apocrypha and all the missing books that's out there and not know Him. Yes. You, you can know all of the text in Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic and <laughs> right. whatever other language you may study. That's you right. can know all of that, but without a relationship with the Most High, it is nothing. It's nothing it's but filler nothing. text. It's nothing. That's right. It's nothing. And we cannot earn a relationship with the Most sure High. We can. cannot earn any type of... Points. <laughs> yes. We cannot earn any type of brownie points with the Most High. The Most High is not impressed nope. by anything that we say or do. 
it's, it's our flesh that takes pleasure in the things that we know and the things that we um, perceive, the things that we have, the That's things right. that we say. Our flesh takes pleasure in that, but That's the Most right. High does not. He doesn't. The Most High takes pleasure in those who are drawing near to him, not just with their mouth, but with their heart. Those who follow his law, statutes, and commandments, those who love his people, those who love his word. I mean, it's so much to this. That's right. And anytime we put ourselves in a position of thinking that we can earn our way into the kingdom through our own knowledge, our own wisdom, our own puffiness, then we are on a dark road to nowhere. Yeah. Let me say something to you. I want you to think about this way. We always want all this knowledge and wisdom. We go after it, right? Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, it's, it's, it's more important that you Get to know the Most High personally because you can get all that knowledge and all that knowledge and not even know Him. Mm -hmm. What good is it? Hmm? Yes. What good is knowledge if you don't know Him? So um, basically what we're trying to say is having a relationship with the Most High is just much more important. Okay. Now. He don't want you to have a relationship with him and be dumb. He wants right. you to be smart. So mm -hmm. he do want you to get knowledge. But you got to understand, you got to be well balanced, yes. okay? Mm -hmm. To have all knowledge and not know him personally, you can forget it, yes. okay? Now, some people will say to you today that you can't know him personally. I beg to differ, mm -hmm. okay? I beg to differ because the old patriots, they knew him. He they called, walked with him. He even <laughs> called Abraham friend. He sure did. <laughs> called him his friend. That's mm -hmm. right. So we think that we can't have a relationship right, like that with the Most High today. Oh, yes, you can. Yes. You know, Yehoshua himself said, my sheep hear my voice. And another they will not they follow. They will not follow. That's right. So we can sit here all day long and I can tell you about, about this and about that. But it's important that you understand what knowledge does. Mm -hmm. Knowledge puffs up. Now. Mm -hmm. Solomon, in all his splendor, all his wisdom and knowledge was not enough to keep him from the strange woman, was it? No. Mm -hmm. All that wisdom wasn't enough, okay, but his father David had a certain relationship with the Most High. Mm-hmm. You see, a relationship that Solomon really didn't have. Solomon didn't have a relationship like that, you see. Mm -hmm. So I want you to understand there's something that the Most High wants us to see here, mm -hmm. and it's very important, okay? He don't want us walking around like the walking dead, mm -hmm. okay? Walking around in the assemblies, walking around in churches and, and camps and other places, and dealing with groups, and you just walking around feeling like you're just spiritually dead, or or here's a, or, or you just um, um, gaining knowledge, mm -hmm. like you're pretty much just typing it into the computer. The computer itself is lifeless. Mm -hmm. It's lifeless. Mm -hmm. There's no life in the computer. You understand what I'm saying? No real life. It got a little power that it gets from electricity, but that's it. Mm -hmm. You see? What we have too today going on, and we have to remember what time we're living in. When we get in the scripture, we're going to talk a little bit about this. But we, as the children of Yah, we have to be aware that there are seducing spirits out here and doctrines of devils. Yeah. And when, when I think of the scripture that talks about the false prophets that are going to arise, you know, I used to think about mostly the Christian church, you mm -hmm. see. That's right. But now I'm starting to realize that mm -hmm. in the last days there was something else that was going to take place. There was going to be the awakening of the Israelites. That's right. And so with that awakening, I believe that yep. that is the influx of false prophets false as well. False prophets, that's right. And we've talked about this before, how you have a lot of people who know we're Israelites, yep. but you have folks calling themselves the Comforter. You have folks calling themselves the Messiah. Um, and some people ain't even getting that deep into it, but they're out mm -hmm. here preaching damnable doctrines right. that are a stumbling block to the children of Yah. That's right. You know, the scripture says that there is a way which seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. That's right. And destruction, you see. That's right. And so, just because we know that we are Israelites, that is not the repentance. The repentance is not knowing that we're the Israelites because our people back then knew they were the Israelites. That's right. They but knew they it. had fallen. 
to a state of separation from the Most High. Now, knowing now, that they were the Israelites. That's right. Now, you hear what she just said? You see, we, we get things confused because we come across this scripture. I'm going to name the scripture. I'm going I'm I'm to quote it. But we're going to go to that passage, okay? Mm -hmm. But, you know, the scripture says, I'm ever learning but never coming into, never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. So we say when we come into finding out that we Hebrew Israelites, mm -hmm. uh, when we find out that his name is Yah and Yehoshua, oh, see, we've come into the knowledge of the truth. No, that isn't what that means. No. You see, that's a that's a biggest misconception mm -hmm. that's among us that believe these these truths that we have today. You're only coming into a part of the truth yes. when you come into knowing that you're a Hebrew Israelite or that his name is Yah. That's only a part of the truth mm -hmm. to what's out there to be known about our Father so in heaven. So much to be known. So much to be known, exactly. Mm -hmm. So when you when you say that, you try to make it as if that's the that's it. So you ain't got nothing until you come into that. Oh, I beg to differ. You're going to get something. You can get something when you come into this, and you can have something before you can come into that. Mm -hmm. You can get something either way around. You go, You can get something from the Most High. Mm -hmm. Now, let me show you what I mean by this. Let's look at this passage. We're going to go through this passage here, and we're going to read this. Let's read it from the... Um, Sefer. Sefer, yes. Okay. And while I'm going to it, I want to make this point, too, that especially for those of you coming out of Christianity... See, a lot of um, Israelites, they have a pride in being Israelites and knowing that they are Israelites and have known it for quite a long time. But that, as my husband said, is not the full essence of the truth. You That's see, right. we think that knowing that we are the Israelites is the truth. There is so much more to the truth. Uh, many of us have been in this walk with the Most High for more than 30 years. My husband and I have been in this walk for more than 30 years, but we are coming into another aspect of the truth. You see, there's more to the truth than just knowing we're the Israelites. This is just more truth that we've come into. You see, we had, we had already been filled with the Ruach HaKadosh. We had already known Yahushua HaMashiach. We've known the gifts of the Spirit and so many things. That's and right. so we've been essentially in the truth, you see, but we have come into more truth. And for that, I thank the Most High Yah. Let me say this too, you know, it's amazing. You know, imagine Abraham. When Abraham, he see all these people around him, right, that's worshiping all these little statues and all. He's like, there ain't no gods. Y'all made that. There ain't no gods, you know. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, one day, the Most High come to Abraham and says, Abram, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, who are you? Mm -hmm. Here was the Most High speaking to Abraham and dealing with him. And Abraham didn't even know his name. He didn't even know who he was. And he said, Abram. Mm -hmm. And started to deal with Abraham. That's why they were saying in the scripture, they say things like um, uh, the God of the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. Because they were like, it's their God. You know, he's the God that, you know, to deal with those, those guys. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yes. Because they, a lot of people didn't know what his name was. They didn't know who he was. All they knew was that he was in his life and he was dealing with them and it was miraculous the things that he was doing with them. Yes. So you're supposed to have a relationship with the Most High. And the Most High, and if you continue in that relationship, he will come to you and show you his name. Yes. He will guide you and show you who you are. Mm -hmm. He will give you understandings and give you wisdom and knowledge and give you all of that stuff. You see, and see so, many times people, you know, we talked about this before, how we think that this word is how you get close to the most yeah. high. This is only a part of it, That's because right. if this was the only thing you study in this day in, day out, back, backward and forward, we enjoy studying. But we know that our relationship with the most high is not this book. That's if right. someone were to take all Bibles off the planet right now, set them on fire. Does your relationship end? Let me ask you a question. Let's go back to the days of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? Mm -hmm. um, what Bible did Abraham have? Hmm? Did he even have the Torah? <laughs> did he? Huh? <laughs> did Abraham have the Torah? What about Isaac? Did Isaac have the Torah? Did Jacob have the Torah? Huh? They had hmm? a relationship with the Most High. What about the children of Israel? Huh? After the after Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and, and Joseph finally died or whatever. What about then? 
Did any of them have the Torah then? Not yet. Not yet, <laughs> right? They didn't have none of this written word. So now what was it then that they were following? See, they had a relationship. A relationship. That's right. Yes. People had a relationship with the Father. Mm -hmm. You see, that's why the Most High, um, he, 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 he smiled on um, Joshua and Caleb. Mm -hmm. Because Joshua and Caleb were just like uh, the, all of the other people that were around them. You see, they had another spirit. That's mm -hmm. what the scripture says. Yes. That's right. One thing I wanted to say too, uh, many of us today, we're so excited, you know, to know the truth. You see, That's we're right. so excited to know the truth, but then we get so beside ourselves. The scripture says that Israel has a zeal, but not according to knowledge. Not according to knowledge. We get so zealous in the scripture that we, we study it back and forth. We get so excited when we see things and we put pieces together, precepts and all of this. And some of us know the Hebrew language and, you know, just various things that we can pride ourselves on. You know, but the Most High resists the proud and he gives That's grace right. to the humble because a lot of us like to um, liken ourselves to, um, I'm going to say Pharisees. You, you have the spirit of the Pharisees when you, when you put all of your pride in your knowledge, but you don't have a relationship with the Father. He says he draws nigh to those who draw nigh to him. That's right. And we are not to draw nigh to the Father with our lips and patting ourselves on the back and praising our own selves and what that's we've right. accomplished and what we've done in our lives and how great we are. That's nothing but proud. And like I said, the Most High resists the proud and give grace to the humble. And when you have people who are more into themselves and more to and, and what they're able to do and what they've accomplished, right. what's happening is that's the only thing that they can use to keep them alive. They're really on life support. And that is their life support. This is how they keep themselves functioning because they, right. they have to praise themselves to stay functioning, to just stay alive That's because right. they are dying spiritually. There is no spiritual connection there. Have you ever seen on some of those days where there's a storm, mm -hmm. okay, and then the lights start flickering, then they go out, then all of a sudden they come on just a little bit. You see, and it's just enough to have just a little haze of light, but it's not enough power to light the house, not enough power for the bulb to mm -hmm. shine, but it's just enough to say that there's some life there. And most of us are trying to cling to that little bit of light, but dying spiritually. And so what we need, we need to start rejuvenating our spirits in another way, not just with the knowledge that puffs up, but with a, a sure foundation, a relationship with the Most High that is going to stick and stay. We yeah. need to make sure that our foundation is sure and that our anchor holds and grips a solid rock because if it does not, you will die spiritually. Yeah. You know, it's amazing, you know, what you're saying there because that's right, you will die spiritually. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's it's very important that we understand where we're coming from with this with this particular message mm -hmm. because I've seen so many people die spiritually mm -hmm. you know they just literally sit there and die mm -hmm. you kind of remind me of the passage in, in, the, in the Old Testament where we talked about those lepers when they were sitting there and they were sitting there literally gonna die and the one leper said to them he said why sit you here and die mm -hmm. at least if we go over there if they're gonna kill us and they're gonna just kill us but if we sit there we know we're gonna die for yes. sure yes. you know and that's the position that we are in as a people mm -hmm. a lot of us are in in this position mm -hmm. if you stay where you're at you're gonna just die mm -hmm. so then what do you do well i'm gonna show you what you need to do mm -hmm. because it's very important that you get this it's like just like my wife quoted the scripture she says for Israel have a zeal, mm -hmm. right? A zeal, but not according to knowledge. But when you look up that word knowledge, it was actually full discernment. Mm -hmm. See, they interpreted it and put knowledge there, mm -hmm. but he was actually talking about full discernment. Yes. It's a difference in the two. It's not the knowledge that puffs up. When you look up the word knowledge that puffs up, it's just gnosis, okay? It's just knowledge, just okay? Knowing. Just the knowledge you get from reading and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But epigenosis is something different, you see? Mm -hmm. So when it says ever learning and never coming into the knowledge of the truth, it's talking about full discernment yes. of the truth. Mm -hmm. See, some of you are coming into the truth, but you're not coming into the 
full discernment of the truth. The fullness of the, the truth. The fullness, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're talking about here. Let's read this passage here. Okay. We're going to be coming from 2 Timothy, and I think we, we're going to read the whole chapter. It's very short. Okay. So we'll read the whole chapter. We, we may even break it up. What do you think about that, breaking it up a bit? Yeah. Okay. So we'll take a piece at a time. Okay. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of Yah. Key verse, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. Go ahead and read verse 6 and 7 also. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lust, ever learning and never able to come into the knowledge of of the truth okay now let's look at this It's letting you know that in the last days mm -hmm. these type of men are gonna come okay mm -hmm. they're gonna come and they're gonna be everywhere yeah mm -hmm. yeah and they are too it says for men should be lovers of their own selves mm -hmm. man you hear what it's saying here lovers of their own selves mm -hmm. what are they gonna be doing they're gonna be covetous mm -hmm. you know what covetous means Looking at what somebody else got and wanting it. And wanting it. Yeah, they're going to look at everything that somebody else got and what somebody else doing. And they're going to want it. Mm -hmm. huh? They're going to be covetous. And usually, you hear that? Usually with that covetousness has comes a bitterness as well. That's right. But when you want something that another person has or you desire to do something that another person is doing, you don't just covet that thing, but you look at that person, you start to despise them or you start to have a bitterness towards them because in order to get that thing that you covet, you have to work something in your heart against that person. That's right. And sometimes there's nothing there, but you create something. That's right. And that's part of being reprobate, but go ahead, sweetheart. Yeah, covetous. Now, when you, when, you, when you look in the Old Testament, we covered this before. Mm -hmm. You look at the Old Testament, it talks about coveting, right? Mm -hmm. in the, in, as actually in the commandments. Mm -hmm. It says not to even cover another man's wife. Mm-hmm. It mentions that, right? Mm -hmm. It mentions that. Mm -hmm. So it ain't just coveting things. It can be something that belongs to someone like, like what David did, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yes. Yeah. Now, look at this here. They ain't going to just be covetous. I want you to look at this carefully because he laid it out for you. What else are they going to be? Boasters. Boasters. Oh, you hear that? Boasters. This is a person who, again... <laughs> They look at what they are doing, and, and you know what? I'm going to tie pride right into it because that's the next That's one. the next one, proud. <laughs> Boasters and proud. I'm going to yeah. tie those two in together. This is a person who toots their own horn a lot. Yeah. They have looked at their lives, and in their, in their own eyes, they are very, very proud of their own selves, and they even speak about it. I mean, they speak about it in a way. I mean, it's, it's, it's a way that you can speak about things that you have accomplished or things that you've done in a way that's not boastful. But when a person sounds proud and boastful to the point where in order to lift themselves up, they have to say, but this person over here right. is not doing so well. This person didn't do what I did. They didn't come through the door that I came through. My life is this. My life that's is right. that. Look at what I've done. And you haven't done what I've done. I mean, you people are, you're, you're sick. You're this. You're poor. You don't have what I have. Um, you weren't raised like I was. Uh, look at your life. Look at her life. Look at his life. Whenever a person is proud and boastful, that usually um, comes right along with putting other people down because you've put yourself up here. That's right. <laughs> the Most High has no use for that kind of person. That's right. So you got a person that's actually lifting themselves up. Mm -hmm. See, that's why the scripture, the first part of it, he said men will be lovers of their own selves. Yes, ties right in. It ties right into mm -hmm. all of that, you see. Then it goes on to name some other things. He said men will be blasphemers, disobedient to parents. 
unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. See, that goes into that weird stuff there. Mm -hmm. It says truce breakers, okay? Truce breakers? Oh, yeah, truce breakers. False accusers. So they'll falsely accuse you of something that you didn't even do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Incontinent, fierce, despises of those that are good. Now that one is a trip. Mm -hmm. So you mean tell me this person sit back there, somebody that's that's blessed or the most high may be dealing with a person in a certain way or doing something in a person's life a certain way, and they'll be sitting back despising them. Mm -hmm. Most high doing something for this person. Let me tell you something. I see a person that's blessed out there. I'm like, go right here, brother. Do your thing. Do your thing. Most high blessing you. You go right here. You just do your thing. Happy for them. Happy for them. That's right. You happy should be for happy for them. Anytime you see the most high. Let me tell you something. Any ministry that's being a blessing to people, period. To where people are awakening and they're coming into the truth and they're receiving the ruach and through and, and we talk about not when I say receiving the ruach I'm talking about according to the scriptures right. receiving the ruach okay right, yes. with evidence of the gifts of the spirit you know mm -hmm. and, and and you see these things going on then you should be happy for that person absolutely you should be happy for them now I understand everybody's not going to agree on every doctrine mm -hmm. it's just it's too much um, <laughs> leaven that's been dispersed among us as a people. Through, too much leaven. Through the translations of the heathen. Uh, that's right. It's too much leaven. So then we're going to have uh, times where all of us are going to disagree. But those of you out there that are sitting trying to get some food and then, and then you have all this mess that's going on, that you're starving. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting there, you say, man, I need some food. Though. While all this is going on, I need some food. And see, we're setting up these spiritual restaurants as Israelites, you see. You can go to any restaurant you want and have it your way. <laughs> Whatever doctrine you want, I mean, even, even with the churches, we talked about this before with the churches, you have these have it your way churches. That's but right. I'm seeing the same thing amongst the Israelites. You have people pushing agendas in every direction. Whatever uh, flavor people want, that's what they're pushing. That's what they're pushing. And this is why people are dying spiritually because it's so much you can eat of one thing. Let's just say milk, okay? Because we're saying right now that it's time to get off the milk and start chewing on some meat. But we're going over the same things over and over. Yeah. The same fights and arguments the, the camp battles and, you know, not just camp battles, but ministries, you know, you have people actually sitting down planning their next strategy or attack against another ministry. Let me see how I'm going to come against this ministry now. <laughs> but in the meantime, you have people who may have initially come to you to be fed because the Most High says, feed my sheep, right? Yeah. People may have come to you to be fed initially, yeah. but now they're sitting here saying, man, I'm not getting anything here anymore because this person is always on the attack, always attacking this group, always attacking this person, always attacking ministries. In the meantime, um, I'm on the sideline needing something to drink and something to eat, and I'm starving to death. See what happens? I'm spiritually is. dehydrated That's because right. all they have for me is this dry powdered milk. So basically what we're trying to say is you there's every everybody got some level of truth mm -hmm. some may have a little bit more than the other person some may have a little bit more than this person but a level of truth isn't isn't where it's at it ain't just going getting some information or just a little bit of knowledge mm -hmm. we got to go beyond that we got to go beyond that to the revelation mm -hmm. we got to go beyond that to the epigenosis okay yes. That's what we got to get to. Mm -hmm. So now, when we keep reading this, let's keep reading this part. I want you to see this. It says, now as Jannes and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Mm -hmm. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Mm -hmm. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifested unto all men as theirs also was. Yes. So basically, it's just telling you, you know what? It, it kind of reminds me of the passage in um, um, Acts mm -hmm. when the, um, the um, leaders um, saw what the apostles were doing 
and they gathered them together, you know, the high priests and all of them, they gathered the apostles together, and they were like ready to beat them and, and, and everything, right? And the one guy stood up and he said, hey, wait a minute, y'all, you know? He said, refrain from what y'all talking about doing to these men, <laughs> you know? He said, if this thing be of Yah, you can't fight against it anyway. Mm -hmm. And he said, but if it be not of Yah, it's going to fall anyway, right? That's right. He said, so what's the point in fighting against it? If it don't be of Yah, it will not grow. But if it be of Yah, you can't even fight against it. Mm -hmm. Don't the scriptures tell you that pretty much? Mm -hmm. If Yah be for us, who can what? Who can be against us? Who can be against us? Isn't mm -hmm. that what the scripture says? Mm -hmm. You see? So why do we spend our wheels so much so on trying to tear one another down? Exactly. And in the process, you have the lost sheep that are dying. We, we wanted to talk about this because um, being in the ministry, we get a lot of messages and emails from our people. Mm -hmm. And our people are crying out. Our people are hungry. hungry. They are starving. And they want the truth. You yeah. see? And who do they seek the truth from? Especially those coming out of Christianity. And they are coming into this Israelite walk, okay? And so they look to Israelites who are teaching, right? And so when they come to your buffet, what are they going to sit down to? Are they going to sit down to all this angry, bickering, fighting, cursing, anger, and madness? Yeah. They can't be fed with that. Many of them get discouraged and don't want to go back to Christianity, so they feel lost. These are the messages we get from people. And right now, in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, I rebuke that demon that's out there trying to discourage our people with this nonsense. nonsense. Our people are dying. That's Don't right. you get this? And, and all of our concentration is so much on uplifting our own flesh to where we are scattering Yah's sheep. Yah's sheep are hungry. The harvest is plenty as the laborers are few. And so we should be praying that the Most High would send forth laborers into the harvest. That's right. But instead, we are launching attacks or planning attacks against other ministries, against brothers and sisters, against other churches, other pastors, other camps. That is so non-productive. When you are putting yourself in a position of teaching Yah's people, you have to keep it together. The truth has to be tight. The people at some point will die if they continue to get milk. They have to grow and so that they can begin to accept meat because we are at war, people. We are at war and our people will not survive if you're going to keep them on milk. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, you know, what's, a, what's amazing about this is, um, you know, we we're in a situation where the enemy, it, it reminds me of the dream that I had. You know, I said it, listen to what she was saying. It reminds me of this dream. I had this dream, and the dream was so, oh, man, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. It was so powerful, I woke up literally shaking. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in the dream, there was this valley. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in this valley, all of the Hebrews were fighting. It was like crazy. Not how long I had this dream ago, and I could when I had the dream, I sat there and I I didn't really see the things that I see now mm -hmm. going on. Okay, yes. but in this dream, I saw this all these Hebrews just fighting. Mm -hmm. So when I saw them fight, I want to I want to see who they were fighting, and when I looked, they were fighting themselves. Fighting each other. It was crazy. Fighting each other. They were fighting each other. That's yeah. right. Yeah. One, and they, the groups were fighting each other. They had leaders over each other. And they were all just fighting, literally just fighting each other. It was crazy, you know. And I was in the midst of looking at it. And then the most I said, look at them. Mm -hmm. You know. So I was watching yes. them. And then he told me, he said, this is not of me. Yes. Yeah, so when I saw that, I said, wow. I saw it. Mm -hmm. So then I, and then I said, well, well, Father, so when I saw it, I ran down there, right, and I started pleading with them. And he told me, he said, plead with them. Tell them that this is not of me, not of me. right? Hallelujah. Now, as I pleaded with them and pleaded with them, the most I let me see something else was going on. While they were fighting, the enemy was rearing up mm -hmm. like you wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Yes. The enemy was rearing up and they were rearing up machines and weapons like you wouldn't believe. And I sat there and so finally um, as the enemy began to launch his uh, his weapons and they began to, to launch their ships and everything and, and air, airplanes basically. All of the Yah's people begin to come together and hide themselves because something happened and they begin to awaken and realize that, man, all this fighting we do doing toward each other, man, wait a minute. And so they all started going down and hiding into these little bunkers and stuff, right? These little mounds and stuff. And once they went down, the enemy came right for us. I mean, it was tense in a dream. But as I saw this huge, uh, in, the, in the dream, it was a it said ship, but it was actually a, a huge airplane. Mm -hmm. Right at us, like it was going to drop bombs, and it didn't. It went right over us. Yes. And as we went yeah. right yeah. over us, I was like, wow, what's going on? It's like they missed us. Hallelujah. Guess where they went? To Israel, mm -hmm. over there, mm -hmm. in the land. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the whole side began to speak to me and show me that they're going to drink the cup. Since they assume, they want to assume our name, they're going to drink our cup. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. So now, I said that to say this here. There's so much going on here and so many people are starving. And what we want to do is we want to try to impart something to you all out there that are hungry. Mm -hmm. Because I know you sitting up and you saying to yourself, man, I... I need something. I need it. I know you can sense it. Mm -hmm. I sense it. I can see it in some of you. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I sense it. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to get you to understand is that there is a way that you can get drawn nigh to the most high. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he will draw nigh to you. There is a way to, to beseech him and to seek him to where he'll continue to draw you and you'll get so close to the most high yeah. and you'll have a, a real relationship with him and it won't be based on no church. Mm -hmm. It won't be based on no assembly or no camp or no leader. Mm -hmm. It will be based on your relationship with him and him only. Yeah. And so I want to add to that a bit too. If you feel that you're in a place where you are dying spiritually, save yourself. And in order to save yourself, you have to flee. You have to get away from that thing that is causing you to die spiritually. If you're not being fed somewhere, remove yourself from that place. Yeah. Don't go back. You know, if, liken it to a restaurant. If you're going to eat and you're starving and each time you go there, they're putting um, a couple of drops of water before you and a couple of crumbs, bread crumbs before you. And you leave out of there hungry every, every time. Don't go back. You have to go and be fed. And your soul knows when it's being fed. Yeah, yeah, I was going to go there. You know what's <laughs> yes. funny? Your soul knows it. See, see, you don't have to. See, you, you know when you sit down to the Word. Let me explain something to you. I want you to think about this, right? You know when you sit down to the Word and you just read the Word and you read chapter 1, 2, and 3. You know that you didn't get much but just a little bit of stuff of what you read. Mm -hmm. You know it's a difference. Mm -hmm. You know it's a difference. There are times when you go to that word and you read that word and something happens. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Something happens to you and you yes. say, and you say, wow. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like the other day when I just opened up the scriptures and just read. No, this time the Ruach was speaking to me through the word. Yes. This is what I mean by it. See, don't get things mixed up. You can't measure spiritual growth, okay, by how long you've known the most, well, how long you've known the word, the scriptures. Mm -hmm. You can't base your growth on um, things, okay? You mm -hmm. can't base your base your growth your growth on none of those things. You know how you base your growth on your relationship with the Most High and how much that life has become a part of you. Mm -hmm. You see, because it has to become a part of you. Because now you're talking about somebody who just, who, who read the scripture and he knows things because he read the scriptures or he's living this thing mm -hmm. and he learned this thing and he's grown and knowing the most high and conversating with him and knowing him and knowing his ways. Mm -hmm. I remember this um, one minister a long time ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're going to remember too when I say this. But he says, when you think you're something, when you're nothing, you're a target. <laughs> You hear that? You a target. You are a target for the enemy. <laughs> That's right. You're a target for the enemy. And yeah. so what we need to do, like I said before, is we have to save ourselves from 
anything that's going to pull us backwards. That's right. If you are a part of any assembly, see, we were talking about dying in the assemblies, in the camps, in the churches, and all of this. Or even even if you're not a part of any any assembly, but you sup with right. any particular assembly or church or group. You know, a lot of people, the reason why they're coming out of these churches is because they knew they were dying. Yep. We talked to so That's many people. That's why they're coming out of there, yeah. We get a lot of people that come to our ministry, praise the Most High, to Yah be the glory. A lot of people that come to our ministry out of these churches, and they knew that they were dying there. And so they yeah. said, I've got to get out of here. I have to escape this place, right? That's right. And so, like we said before to our Israelite brothers and sisters, especially our brothers who are out here teaching, you have to understand that when people are fleeing a situation to where they're dying, they're looking for a place of refuge, not a place of turmoil. They're not looking for a place of confusion. They're looking for a place of refuge. I thank the Most High for the, the couple that visited, uh, visited us from Georgia. The brother said that he felt like he was coming on a pilgrimage here, like he had to come here, yeah. that he had to bring his wife here, his family here, because there was something that they perceived that the Most High had here for them. And in talking with them and going over the Word and the Scriptures, I believe that they received whatever it was that the Most High yeah. sent them here for. And so you want to make sure that you are not um, a spiritual hospital, a place that's just going to patch a person up. You need to be a place for healing, complete yeah. and total healing. As the children of Yah come out of these hell dens yeah. that they call churches, they need to be made whole. Yeah. They don't need to be patched up. Okay, they don't need to be bandaged. That's right. They need to be made whole. That's right. And if what you are speaking and preaching and teaching out of your assembly, out of your organization, out of your church, out of your camp, out of your house, wherever it is you're teaching, if what you are putting out there is not going to heal Yah's people, then you are doing more damage than good. That's right. More damage than good. That's right. And guess what? Y'all going to hold you to that. He's going to hold you accountable. Yeah, He's going to hold you accountable. Yes. Don't you know, he did, what did he say? He said, the least, mm. the least person in his kingdom. He said, boy, you better not touch the least of my mm. people. You better not harm the least of my people. Mm -hmm. He said, it would be better for someone to tie a rope to your neck and try to other into the stone and toss you in the sea, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. than for you to hurt the least of my kingdom. Mm -hmm. And how many of the least of y'all's kingdom are getting hurt every single day out here? Obliterated with your words. Yeah, obliterated. Yeah, let me tell mm -hmm. you something. You won't escape that. <laughs> Trust me, you won't mm -hmm. escape it. Now, for those of you out there, this is what I want to say to you, okay? The Most High made a way for you to be fed, but you got to understand some things, okay? Mm -hmm. This understanding is very simple, mm -hmm. okay? The Most High, He made a way for us, okay? He mm -hmm. knew that we would need water, okay? He knew we, we would need drink. He knew it, we would need meat, Yes. okay? He knew it. Mm -hmm. So what did he say concerning the water, concerning needing something to drink? He said, this is what I'm going to do, okay? I'm going to put a well in you. Hallelujah. So when you out here in the drought and ain't no water, ain't no rain coming down, right? Because that's what we in right now. This is a spiritual drought around here. Yes. Look around in, in this world. It's a spiritual drought. Yes, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, when you look around and ain't no rain coming down, ain't no water around, and you going around looking for some water over here, desert land over here, desert land over there. He said, don't worry about that. I'm going to put a well in you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. well I'm going to put a Hallelujah. well in you. So when you get thirsty, you can just draw from the well that's in you. You won't have to go around and look and pull up no plant digging holes and do. You don't have to do none of that. Mm -hmm. Waiting for the rain and ain't nothing coming. Nope. Everybody else will be starving, dying of thirst, but you'll have a well in you. Hallelujah. And just to add to that, the scripture says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, uh -huh. out of your belly shall flow rivers, rivers. of living, living water. Living water, that's right. We need living water <laughs> in order for us to survive, in order for us to stay alive. That's right. We need that living that water. That living water. Now, what's that living water? Mm -hmm. Huh? What did the scripture say the living water was? Huh? 
Let's turn to it. We're going to go to that scripture, okay? And when, we, when we're done with that, some of this right here for, for the rest of this chapter actually gets into some of that stuff that we need as well. So I want to go back to the Timothy as well to finish that off. Okay. I think it's in John. Let me just go here. Okay, let's see if this is it. Okay. Yeah, this is it. John chapter 7, verse 38. Okay, okay. John chapter 7. I'm going to read it to you here. Verse 38. Okay. It says, The last day, that great day of the feast, Yehoshua stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. let him come unto me and drink. Yes, hallelujah. Then he says, So in other words, he said, Let him come where? Unto him and unto drink. Unto him and drink. Mm -hmm. No, no, wait a minute. He said, Go somewhere else, didn't he? No. He, he said, said, Come unto him. Unto him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then he said, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yes, hallelujah. Now, then it says, but this spake he of, of the, the spirit, the Ruach, mm -hmm. which they which believe on him should receive. For the set apart Ruach was not yet given because Jehoshua was not yet glorified. So in other words, it was referring to the Ruach when it would come down in Acts, in the book of Acts chapter 2. Mm -hmm. When that Ruach would finally come down upon the believers and fill them, yeah, this was the well that he was, was putting in there. Was spoken of this is the well, that's oil. right. Mm -hmm. This is the well, you're putting this well in you, see? So now you could draw from that well. Mm -hmm. Everybody else would be dying of thirst, but you will have that well to draw from, Hallelujah. you see? So now, he says, I want to put this well in. So if you don't have the Ruach, if you don't have a Ruach, you are spiritually dead. You're spiritually dead. That's right. And we're right. talking about the indwelling of the Ruach. The indwelling. That's right. The indwelling. And it okay. goes back to what this passage says. You don't want to be one of those who have a form of godliness. That's right. And deny the power or don't have the power. That's we need right. that power of Yah. That's right. Now I'm going to pick this back up in Timothy. Go ahead. Um, verse, starting mm -hmm. at verse 10. Now this is the state that the Most High wants us to be in. He says, but you will have full, fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all Yahushua delivered me. Yea, and all that will live in the fear of Yahuwah, in Yahushua HaMashiach, shall suffer persecution, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue in the things which you have learned mm -hmm. and have assured of knowing of whom you have learned them, and that from a child you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Yahushua HaMashiach. All scripture is given by inspiration of Yahuwah and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, for righteousness, that the man of Yah may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. <laughs> thoroughly furnished. Hallelujah. Thoroughly furnished. Getting close to the Most High. And looking at all of this, when you lay aside all that foolishness that was talking about in the first passage and you cleave to the, right. the understanding and the inspiration and the word and the doctrine and all the things that the Most High says that we should have and we should follow after, then you can actually help to grow that spiritual man and reject the dying process that you go through if you cleave to that old man. And we said, my husband said he's going to do another version of the old man, new man. That old man is nothing but death. Okay. But the spiritual man is life if you feed the spiritual man. And this is what we're talking about here yeah. today too. You have to feed your spiritual man. Yeah. And if you are not being fed, you are dying. You are dying spiritually. So in order That's to right. feed that spiritual man, what must you do? You must get in the word and you must learn righteousness. You must learn holiness, set apartness, mm -hmm. thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now let me show you something about that that, that new man, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is what where we where we tend to miss it because 
sometimes you think you're building up the new man and you really ain't. You're really puffing up the old man. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Come on now. <laughs> you hear what I just said? Yes. Sometimes you think you're building up the new man and you're really puffing up the old man. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to show you the difference in the two, okay? You see, the old man is different than the new man. The new man, the old man wants to be exalted. Mm -hmm. He wants it. Yes, he he wants to be exalted. He wants all of this stuff because he that's just his nature. Yes. You see? But the most I say, no, the old man needs to be put to death. That's okay? Right. But now, what's going on with the new man is this here. The new man is different. The new man requires a certain amount of understanding and wisdom and knowledge in order for him to grow. He can't grow. Yeah, he can't survive and grow because the old man is too powerful. Mm -hmm. See, the old man was first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Wasn't he first? Mm -hmm. Huh? He's the elder. Mm -hmm. He's stronger. Mm -hmm. Because when he, he was born first, that's why many people, it's hard for them to get rid of their old habits because that old man is built upon those old habits. Yes. And then he's just alive and strong. And so when they start getting in the word, that new man is like, he's just all weak, you see. Mm -hmm. But that's why you have to put that old man to death. That's why the scripture says, mortify your deeds that are upon earth. Talking about you mortify your members, that yes. is, you see, that are upon earth. You gotta mortify your members. Put them to death. Talking about your your eyes and your mouth and your ears and all this. And you gotta shut it off from all this stuff that's feeding the old man. That's because right. that old that stuff is keeping that old man built up. Okay? So now that new man, once you start to feed that new man, he starts to rise up. He gets up and you get up every morning, you start to feed him, he'll start to rise up and get strong. That's now, right. That new man, you can't, you can't build that new man up with just knowledge. That's right. Knowledge don't build up the new man. Read it for yourself. Check the scriptures for yourself. Mm -hmm. The inward man is renewed how day by day in the knowledge of him that created him. Look up that word knowledge mm -hmm. that it's talking about. It's not good gnosis. Okay, mm -hmm. it's 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 epigenosis, which is full discernment. He is he grows in that full discernment. Mm -hmm. That's revelation. Yes. You get what I'm saying? So now he you want to build up the new man. You don't want to puff up the old man. You see, that's why the scripture says he's if we are ever learning, but never coming into the knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. Because that means a person can sit up. And learn and learn and learn and learn. And stay flatlined. <laughs> Lost in the house. Stay flatlined. Dying in the church. That's right. Dying in the camps. Dying in the assembly because there is no spiritual growth. That's right. You see, they're on life support. All it takes is the right thing to push them in the wrong di direction and they are spiritually dead, spiritually flatlined. That's right. So now my question is you, to you is this here. Are you feeding your new man? Huh? Are you feeding the inner man? Because that's what you should be doing. You should be feeding that inner man. But see, you got to feed that inner man right. First of all, you don't have inner man if you ain't got the Ruach. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there ain't no way around that. <laughs> How you think he become born again? You become born again of the spirit. Yes. It's through the spirit you mm -hmm. become born again. You see, not through the knowledge, it's the, through the spirit. Mm -hmm. You see, when you become born of the water and of the spirit, mm -hmm. you are born again. Mm -hmm. And once you become born again, you have a new man. An old man is what? Put to death. That's what it says in Romans. All you can do is read Romans chapter 6. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 6 explain it all. And once that new man is coming to life, you have to keep feeding that new man. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? You have to keep giving him the right knowledge, okay? It, it's so much to this, you know. <clears throat> that well that's in you, and it's not just the well. Because he said, I didn't just give you a well. He said, I gave you some meat too. Mm -hmm. But what did he say the meat was? His flesh. <laughs> Which is his word. Which is his word, mm -hmm. you see. So you need both. You need both the spirit and you need the word. You see, they both agree, mm -hmm. you see. One thing you need to do too is determine who's who's living and dwelling in you, okay? Who's getting more time? Is it the spiritual man or the old man? The old That's man right. or the new man, should I say? Who is the one who's taken over? You see? And the way that you want to determine that is look, if the lust of the flesh or the works of the flesh are more prevalent in your life, mm -hmm. then the old man is at the wheel. 
That's right. Okay. But if the works of the Spirit or the fruit of the Spirit are being manifested, then you know who is at the wheel. But for most of us, <laughs> most of us, you, there are so many works of the flesh that are being manifested daily. Daily. I mean, things that we wouldn't even consider as works of the flesh. This is why we wanted to talk about all of the contentions and stuff because that is a work of the flesh. That's it's a work not of the flesh. The That's time. right. That's right. If you can't look at your brothers and sisters and have a heart of love and compassion, then there is a problem in your heart. I was yeah. looking at um, a statement this brother made today. He said that um, it was in response to a post that we as so-called black people need to learn how to start loving each other and stop mm. hating each other. And he says he is working on it and he's getting there because now he has a greater, greater understanding as to why we act the way we act as a yeah. people. So he's starting to love his people, right? But some of us, even though we know the truth and all of this, we have so much anger in our hearts for one another. The scripture says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Some of us look at each other. Uh, some of y'all even look at us and you, and you, and you, you looking at us and you got this anger, this bitterness, and this hatred. You have to ask yourself, where is that coming from? When I look at my brothers and sisters, I have love in my heart for them. Mm -hmm. Even those that may have a root of bitterness, because this is something that is just in me. I remember when I was probably about 14 or 15 years old, there was a minister um, of the Church of God in Christ, as a matter of fact, um, he looked at me, he said, daughter, you have a spirit of love for Yah's people. You have a spirit of love on you. And I was just a kid at the time. But I've always felt that. And I've always had this, this strong love for our people. So it angers me when I see the fighting and the bickering and the contentions and the hatred. I'm like, where does that come from? Even for those that wrong us, we're supposed to love our brothers and sisters, but we're concentrating more of our efforts on despising one another and we sit back in our seats mm -hmm. and we think that the Most High is okay with this because we know the word. The Most High is not okay with it. No, that. he's not. As a matter of fact, it infuriates him. That's right. That is not a good place to be in and if you find yourself in that situation where you can't look at your brothers and sisters and say, look, I love you, then you need to fall on your knees and repent. That's right. Now, I want to share something with you, right? Okay? This is the Word. I'm going to share, share with you what the Word says, okay? Now, we talked about being in the Spirit and being in the flesh, right? Mm -hmm. This scripture here, this is in Galatians chapter 5. And I'm going to start at verse, um, let's start at verse 16. Okay? It says, this I say then, walk in the Ruach. Mm -hmm. The Spirit is what it says here. Walk in the Ruach or the Spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh mm -hmm. for the flesh lusteth against the Ruach or the spirit mm -hmm. and the spirit the Ruach against the flesh mm -hmm. and these are contrary the one to another so that you cannot do the things that you would mm -hmm. so in other words it's basically saying that if you in the spirit if you walk in the spirit you can't fulfill the lust of the flesh and if you in the flesh you can't walk in the spirit mm -mm. They're contrary one to the other. You impossible. can't. It's impossible, right? Mm -hmm. Pay attention here now. But if you be led of the led of the spirit or of the ruach, you are not under the law. Well, that's a, that's another topic. <laughs> okay, because I know people. Whoa, wait a minute! You ain't under the law. That's, I'll show you what that's about another time. But anyway, it says now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Now listen to these works of the flesh. Okay. That's why I say, I tell you, it's easy to tell somebody in the flesh. All you got to do is look at these works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to know who in the flesh? Look at this here. It says adultery. So if they're committing adultery, they're in the flesh. Fornication, they're in the flesh. Uncleanness, they're in the flesh. Lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, manipulation, and all that stuff, that's flesh. Mm -hmm. That's right. Hatred, hatred. Toward your own brother and your own sister. Yeah, hatred toward your toward your own sister, huh? Variants, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and the such like. 
of which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yah. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Now, I'm not going to stop there. Let's keep reading it. Let's keep going. Okay. Then it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Hmm. So you mean to tell me you don't have love for your brother and your sister? Huh? Just like I hear some of these brothers that come against um, the daughters of Yah with such hatred, right? You don't, you don't have no love for them? But yet, they say they have the spirit of Yah in them, but they have nothing but hatred in their hearts for their brothers and sisters. That's right. Notice it says another gift, of, another fruit of the spirit is what? Joy. joy. Hmm. No joy. Always, oh, no joy whatsoever, right? Mm -hmm. So he's telling you, this is how you can recognize those that's in the spirit. You recognize them by their love and their joy. What else? Peace. Peace. You know, the scripture says we're supposed to um, live peaceful, peaceful with all men. Huh? Don't it say that? Huh? Then it says long suffering. Huh? Gentleness. Oh, man, that just knocked out the end. That's like, bam! Gentleness. You know what it means to be gentle? You know how many men, you know how many women my wife have talked to that, that, that have been married? To men that have not been gentle with their own wives? Mm -hmm. Man, goodness and faith. Mm -hmm. Meekness. Wait a minute. I thought that was only for women. <laughs> <laughs> Don't people say women supposed to be only meek and lowly, only the women supposed to be meek and lowly? Well, the scripture said if it's just for women, so you're saying only the women going to inherit the earth, because the scripture says the meek shall inherit the earth, right? <laughs> That's right. Meekness, temperance. And calm down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> See that? Temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and love. So if you're supposed to be not Christ, I, I'm reading the King James here. You want me to read the rest? And, um, Go ahead. Paper? Go ahead. Read it. And they that are Yahushua Muhammadiyahs have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Ruach, let us also walk in the Ruach. Let us not be desirous of, of vain glory. Of what? Vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Oh my goodness! Come on now. Did you hear that? I heard it. <laughs> I heard it too. Let's try loving one another. Yeah. I promise you it feels good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what Numo is funny about this past year? This is if you live in the Ruach, let us also walk, walk in it. Walk in it. Yes. So, so you got to walk in it. You just can't sit there and say, yeah, I got the Ruach. No, you got to walk in it. Walk if in you it. ain't walk, if you will, if you claim to be walking in the Ruach and you're not, you're, you're not bearing fruit, you see, fruit, what did he think he was talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the most out of some of these every tree that don't bear bring forth fruit that's gonna be hewn down and thrown into the fire? See yeah. the problem is you only saw one aspect of that fruit. You think he's talking about souls, right? Yeah. He's talking about this fruit also. Huh? Every tree that don't bring forth fruit. These talking about the fruit of the spirit also. You gotta bring forth the fruit of the spirit. Why? Because he just told you that if you're not if you're not experiencing the fruit of the spirit, you must be experiencing what? The, the, the lust of the, the, lust flesh. Of the flesh, mm -hmm. which you won't inherit the kingdom of heaven, of heaven right? That's right. Ain't that what it says? Mm -hmm. So then it goes on to tell us, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another, envying one another. Mm -hmm. Wow. You see, so basically, the Most High really is giving, giving you a blueprint on how to draw nigh to him and how to feed that inner man. Come on, think about it. You know if that inner man is being fed. Mm -hmm. You know if you're if you're actually getting something. You know if you have a relationship with the Most High or not. Mm -hmm. You know. Let me tell you something. Okay, listen to me on this here, real quickly here, right? Now, let's say that a man has a wife, right? Okay, and his wife, he been married to her for a year, and since the time he married to her. He has not once went in unto her. He don't talk to her. He don't deal with her at all. Period. Well, 
<laughs> you know by that that he ain't got no relationship, right? I mean, come on now. You know he don't have a relationship, okay? So then, can that woman, can he, can he, can she come and say to him, oh, I know you. She don't know him. <laughs> he ain't spent no time with her. He don't know her. You understand? So the scripture is making it clear. There's a way that you know whether or not you know the Most High or whether or not you're close to Him. Mm -hmm. There you can feel it. You mean to tell me, let me tell you something, okay? Let me let me give you another example of something, right? Now, there is no way that if you're sitting in the room that you're in right now, right? that a 2,000 pound elephant can walk in that room and you sit there and not know that that 2 pound elephant, 2,000 pound elephant is not there, right? Huh? There is no way, no way that you're gonna sit there and say that <clears throat> I don't see him. So in other words, the most high is, is greater than any 2,000 pound elephant. I don't mm -hmm. know how big elephants are, how much they weigh. I just threw <laughs> the number out there. Could yeah. be more, could be less. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the most high is greater than that. Let me tell you something. When the most high comes into your presence, don't nobody have to shake and say, hey, you know what? The most high is in the room. That's right. Nobody <laughs> has to do that. <laughs> nobody got to do that. When the most high is dealing with you, mm -hmm. you don't, don't nobody have to shake you and tell you, oh, he's here. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's, oh, 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 anything. You know it. Mm -hmm. You can feel his presence. Mm -hmm. You feel him when he comes upon you, when he touches you, when he tells you something, when he shows you something. You can hear his voice. Mm -hmm. You see, some of you can. You can hear his voice. You know it. Mm -hmm. It's the same way. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same way. That's right. And you want to make sure you ain't hearing your own voice. Don't let your own knowledge That's right. deceive you into thinking you have something. Because that will bring about spiritual death. That can only get you so far. That's right. You know, bringing it back home to where we started this lesson off. We want to make sure that we are not dying spiritually. <laughs> it's time for us to graduate to meet. Okay? Because the milk is going to bring about spiritual death. And if you're sitting at a right. table that is not serving you meat, it's time to move on. Pick up and move on. Save yourself. That's right. Yeah, you, you, you got to, you got, I mean, you know if you're starving or not. You know when you're hungry. You can tell. You can tell, you know. Go by the signs of what you feel inside here. You know what you're feeling, mm -hmm. okay? But I tell you, this, this is something that I pray that you can receive, you know, and I pray that you look into these scriptures that we gave you here, you know, because uh, people are starving. And those of you out there that are starving, you don't have to starve. Mm -hmm. If you draw nigh to the most high, I guarantee you, he'll draw nigh to you. That's right. You ain't got to have nobody yeah. showing you or guiding you to anything. You can just be getting in his word and seeking him from with a pure heart, seeking him with a pure heart. I guarantee you, the most high will see that and he'll say, oh, oh, okay. Oh, this brother here is seeking me. This sister here is getting close to me. Wow. To the point where they're letting go. Whatever it is they feel like they need to let go. Yes. They letting go of stuff. Okay, I'm letting go of this. I'm letting go of that. Whatever you say, Father. Whatever you want me to do, I'll let go of it. Mm -hmm. You get get that type of that attitude? Man, watch out. As the most high, he'll start to draw an eye to you. And start to draw you to him. And the next thing you know, he'll start to speak to you. That's right. He'll fill you with this ruach. And you'll sit there and say, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well. On that note, <laughs> like we said, we hope you all got something from this. Guess mm -hmm. what, y'all? It's kind of late. <laughs> we did a late taping because we were so busy today. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we did a late taping, but we wanted to get this in. We felt like it was very important because we do know that some of y'all's people are hungry. They're starving. That's right. And they want the word. And we just want to... We kind of want to send a message to our brothers and sisters who are out here speaking and ministering the words to please take heed to what we've said about making sure that you're preparing a good table for Yah's people. Yeah. Because we don't want to be in danger of causing his sheep to scatter. We don't want, you know, the scripture says, woe unto you shepherds who scatter my sheep. That's right. You don't want to put yourself in that situation. Um, even though you may look at people and you get frustrated because sometimes our people can take you there. You know, um, this one brother had mentioned to my husband, he said, um, notice Moses missed out because he ended up breaking the 
<laughs> well, he smoked the rock or what yeah, was he did something. something and he ended up missing out because those those folk made him upset <laughs> you see so sometimes <laughs> our people can take you there yeah, but take you, you see in a the most I love Moses but you see what he did you see so we have to we have to stay strong in all of this okay and we, we can't get to the point where we're killing Yah's sheep or scattering them we have to continue to feed them what they need to be fed okay and not feed them with um, the the type of food that's going to kill them or destroy them. You you want to make sure that your liberty is not a stumbling block to your brothers and sisters. You know, I want to say this too real quickly here. I want you to think about this, especially you all out there that are teaching and witnessing the Yah's people and you teaching and you, you may be um, a preacher, a pastor, a teacher, or a rabbi, or whatever it is you may be. I'm going to say this to you and I want you to hear me, okay? The Most High is going to hold you accountable for every person, mm -hmm. every person that you dealt with in a wrong way, you're going to be held accountable for that. That's right. Completely accountable for it. So my word to you is that you make sure that what you're doing is of Yah and that you're doing exactly what He wants you to do and not what you want to do. And you better preach according to his spirit and be led of his spirit in the things you preach. Mm -hmm. And you better learn from him too. You better learn from his spirit and teach only the things that his spirit have taught. Because boy, you come with that stuff, that your, your own type of stuff or whatever, I guarantee you, if them, if them people that's under you ain't learning and they dying spiritually, he gonna hold you accountable for every last one of those souls. Well, on that note, we gonna say, say shalom. shalom.